The National Broadcasting Company delays the start of this program to bring you a special bulletin. From the NBC newsroom in New York, a display of perfect teamwork by American ground and air forces has stalled the communist drive on the Chonan front. One dispatch says the North Koreans have suffered their first real thrashing of the invasion. And their push on Tajan with 50,000 troops has been halted, at least for the moment, at a point some 35 miles from Tajan. Keep tuned to your NBC station for the later news. The Adventures of... The Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charters and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes to radio, transcribed, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Taxi! Taxi! You don't want a taxi, Mr. Templer. I got a car right here. What? Well, Augie Cofflethwaite. When did you leave Alcatraz? Oh, I got my diploma a couple of months ago. Now I'm back on the apple. Oh. Hop in. Are you going my way? Yeah, I'm going your way. All right, thanks. You're sure it's no trouble? It's no trouble. Move into the driver's seat. You want me to drive? That's right. Why? Oh, don't tell me this is a hot car, and you don't want to be found at the wheel. How did you guess? Augie, didn't you learn anything in prison? Yeah, I learned crime does not pay, besides which it is against the law. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Didn't you know? I mean, I'm glad to find out you know. Oh, sure, Mr. Templer. I learned my lesson. I'm off crime for keep. But uh, then this car... Ain't it a beaut? And the keys was in it. With a setup like that, it'd be a crime not to take it. And like I said... Yes, I... you're off crime for Keith. Yeah. Now, let's go, shall we? Start her up. Oh, but Augie... Do like I tell you. Oh, certainly, Augie. That's right. Now, put her into first. Oh, Augie, why didn't you swipe a car with automatic drive while you're at it? I just wasn't thinking. Augie, uh, why the gun? So you'll do like I tell you. Oh. That's how come you're driving. I want to keep my eye on you. Uh, the eye, I don't mind. It's the gun I resent. Put it away and I'll be grateful as long as I live. Trouble is, you ain't going to live very long. Oh, so that's how we stand. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Templer, but what can I do? The job's a job. Chuck the job. You know the saying, all work and no play. Oh, I'll play after I knock off. You mean after you knock me off? That's right. But, Augie... You know, if you kill me, you'll hate yourself in the morning. Yeah, I know. But if I don't, I'll hate myself tonight. It's a cash deal. And if I top whatever you're getting? No dice. I got my reputation to think of. Oh, pardon me for being crude. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Templer. Well, as long as you're determined to get rid of me, at least tell me who's giving the orders. Oh, sorry. That's confidential. Oh, I won't breathe it to a living soul, believe me. Huh? Oh, I guess you won't at that. So there's no harm. In... I guess you're right, under the circumstances. Well, then? It's a guy named Ronald Stanton. Ronald Stanton? Who's he? In my business, you don't ask questions. All right, a guy named Ronald Stanton. But what's he got against me? Look, in my business, you Ah, don't... yes, but in my business, you do. Oh. Well, all I know, Stanton calls me in, gives me the assignment, gives me a down payment... And I get the rest on delivery. Of my course. Right. Well, it's nice work if you can get it. Yeah, I'm sorry about this, Mr. Templer, but times are tough. Mm-hmm. You've got to take what comes along. Mm-hmm. Opportunity only knocks once. Mm-hmm. A guy's got to live. Mm, my sentiments exactly. Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing? I'm just stepping on the gas. Slow down. I said slow down or I'll plug you. You think we can find a coffin built for two? Look out for that car! Oh. <laughs> Close. What are you trying to do, scare me to death? It's a thought. If you don't stop... Yes? If you don't stop... You said that before. Please, Mr. Templer. Oh, you want me to stop? Yes. Well, all right. Oh, 
What? What? What hit me? The windshield, and now I'll take that gun. Oh. Come on, Augie, snap out of it. Uh, Mr. Templer, what was the idea? Don't you realize we might have been killed? <laughs> I'll get it. I'm expecting visitors. Very good, sir. Yes? Are you Ronald Stanton? Yes, and you? Simon Templer, I... Simon Templer, as I live and breathe. <laughs> no, as I do. Surprise, isn't it? Where's Augie? Nursing a headache. Oh, dear me, I should have known. May I come in? I want to talk to you. Certainly, certainly. Said the spider to the fly. But before you get any ideas, Mr. Stanton, I've left word I was coming here. So for your sake... I quite understand. Come in. Right. Now, uh, you have nothing to worry about, Mr. Templer. I am constitutionally incapable of violence. That's why I'm forced to depend upon dullards like Augie. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I'm really in every way unsuited for the sort of work I've engaged in. I should have been an artist. I have the soul of an artist, the temperament of an artist, the intellect of an artist. Well, then why aren't you an artist? My paintings stink. Oh. Uh... So you find me a swindler instead. Uh, degrading, but <laughs> a man must live. So I've heard. And at least it does involve the intelligence. Matching one's wits, as it were. <gasps> oh, dear me. What's the matter? I just remembered. I must make a note to call the florist in the morning and cancel the flowers. What flowers? For your funeral. You won't be needing them, will you? <laughs> Not if I can help it. Mm, pity. They were gorgeous. You'd have loved them. Well, I'll try to bear up. <sighs> well, now, uh, to business. I suppose you've come here for your money. Have I? Mm, since Augie failed me, I'm afraid I'll have to pay. Uh, by the way, you're not going to hold this unpleasantness with Augie against me, are you? A little thing like that? Don't be silly. <laughs> I knew you'd understand. It was a natural move on my part. Anyone would have done the same, rather than pay. Uh, you would have yourself. I wouldn't have used Augie. Neither shall I next time. But since you and I understand each other, it won't affect our dealing. Not in the least. Good. Then it's still just the agreed-upon amount. Uh, uh, yes, yes, the agreed-upon amount. Excellent. I, uh, may not have it all here, though. We'll see how much is in the safe. Uh, just a moment. Uh, mm, mm. Afraid uh, this isn't quite enough. Let me count it. Don't you ever keep that safe locked? I never can remember the combination. Uh, no. No, this is only 12,000. Only 12,000. Yes. You see, I really didn't expect you. If you'll come to the office in the morning, I'll give you the other three. Will you be there? Unless I wake up in the meantime. Good night, Mr. Sam. Equipped office, hasn't he? Yes, very. And a well equipped receptionist. Oh. What do you want? Uh, what do I want? Uh, we'll get around to that later. Right now, I want to see Mr. Stanton. Who shall I say is calling? Simon Templer. Simon Templer? Not the saint. All right, not the saint. Oh, but you must be. All right, I am. Well, I wish you'd make up your mind. Well, I'm really Bulldog Drummond, but I'm traveling incognito. Now, may I see Mr. Stanton? Just a moment. Stanton's secretary. Oh, hello. Ah, uh, yes, ah, uh, yes. Uh, Templar, uh, what is it, sir? What is it? I'd like to see Mr. Stanton. Uh, Mr. Stanton is a very busy man, sir, very busy. He'll see me. Well, now, I don't know, I don't know. Ah, uh, but I do know, I do know. As a matter of fact, I don't believe he's in yet. Uh, don't believe he is. Well, I'll wait, I'll wait. Uh, can't I help you? Uh, have you got $3,000? The $3,000. $3,000 to go with twelve. I don't understand. I didn't think you would. I'll wait for Mr. Stanton. Very well, if you insist. Very well. Now, come inside. Uh, you can wait there. Uh, thanks. Uh, oh, um... The name is Linda. Oh, well, I, I hope you'll be here when I get back. I'll make a point of it. <laughs> uh, lead on, Mr. Briggs. You can wait in my office. Uh, this door right here. Uh, go on in. Thanks. Do you... Oh. Yes, Mr. Stanton. Linda, where's Briggs? Isn't he in his office? I 
have been buzzing. No answer. Go find him, will you? Yes, Mr. Stanton. He was here a little while ago. just been put to sleep, and with you in my dreams, I don't want to wake up. But what happened? You took the words right out of my mouth. Where's Mr. Briggs? I wouldn't know. Is he the one who knocked you out? I wouldn't be surprised. But why? That, as they say, is the question. And why did he tell you that Mr. Stanton wasn't in? That, as they say, say, how many questions are there? And as long as questions seem to be in order, allow me... Uh, is Mr. Stanton in? Yes, he's been in all morning, so I couldn't understand. Look, what... help me up, will you? Oh, of course. <laughs> Oh, thanks. What? Mm, nice. Leaning on you. I must remember to get knocked out more often. Do you think you can walk? Mm, probably, but I don't feel inclined to find out. Well, we can't just stand here with our arms around each other. Can't we? Well, on second thought, perhaps we can. <laughs> on third thought, we can. Here comes Mr. Stanton. Well, 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 isn't this chummy? Uh, this is Mr. Templer, Mr. Stanton. He's just had a frightful experience, and I... Frightful? Quite the contrary, I'd say. I mean, he was knocked out. Naturally. One look at you and any man. I mean, literally. Uh, with a sap, a blackjack. What? Oh, no. Oh, yes. But that's incredible. Who? Why? I'm afraid you'll have to ask your secretary. Oh, yes, Briggs. Where is he? I can't find him, Mr. Stanton. He seems to have left the office. Could he have left without your seeing him? Yes, Mr. Templer. Through the back. But oh. are you... Are you trying to say that Briggs knocked you out, Mr. Templer? Is it so hard to believe? I just don't understand it. Well, I came here for sugar, so I suppose he decided to give me my lump. <laughs> quite good, quite good. <laughs> ah, yes, sugar. You want the 3000 I'll get it for you, Mr. Templer. All right. And uh, we're agreed this settles my account with you, eh? Yes, Stanton, it does. But I still have an account to settle with Mr. Briggs. I didn't expect to see you. I invited you for dinner. Did you think I'd stand you up? I mean, under the circumstances. What circumstances? Haven't you heard? They've found Briggs. Good. I'll settle with him later. Right now. Aren't you afraid you'll be seen? Now, don't tell me you have a jealous husband. I don't have a husband. There, you see, life can be beautiful. But the police are a very dull topic of conversation. I prefer. But they're looking for you. For me? Yes. So I'll buy a dog license. It's not about a dog license. I told you they've found Briggs. So you did. What's he been saying about me? Nothing. Dead men never do. <laughs> well, then I... Dead men? Yes, didn't you know? He's been murdered. I beg your pardon, monsieur. Would you care to order now, sir? I'll be very honest with you, Captain. I, I'm not a bit hungry. But, monsieur, may I suggest... No, that... no, thank you. But the chef has prepared pheasant on the glass. Tell the chef to have one on me. Huh? Very well, monsieur. Now, Linda, what were we talking about? Oh, Simon. Uh, so I'm suspect number one. Yes. Did you do it? Kill Briggs? I hardly knew him. I only kill old friends. You don't seem to realize how serious this is. Well, my conscience is clear, and I've got a good lawyer. Tell me something about Stanton, Linda. What about him? What's his racket? Why, he's in the real estate business. So it says on his door, but what's his racket? I don't understand. Huh. I wonder. All I know is Mr. Stanton has some big project underway. He's been selling stock in it. So that's it. What? The racket. <laughs> I don't know about it being a racket. It's a business deal. I thought it was legitimate. Look, you don't pay off somebody to the tune of 15000 to shut him up about a legitimate business deal. Did Mr. Stanton do that? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know much about it. I've only worked for him a short while. Who did he pay off? Me. You? But you said you didn't know. I didn't. But then we all make mistakes. You mean Mr. Stanton is a swindler, and he thought you found out, so he paid you to shut up? Mm-hmm, that's right. And you accepted his money? Well, it seemed a shame to spoil his fun, but I'll contribute it to a worthy cause. <laughs> uh, do you feel like a worthy cause? But what made Mr. Stanton think that you knew? Briggs, obviously. He must have been blackmailing Stanton in my name. Why your name? If I say so myself, Linda, and I do, it's a name that carries weight with the underworld. But why didn't he use his own name? He anticipated Augie. What? Blackmail is a hazardous occupation. Briggs wanted to avoid the hazards. So he used my name, probably intending to send a messenger for the money. But Stanton jumped the gun by sending Augie after me. Who is Augie? One of nature's mistakes. <sighs> That's not very specific. If I were any more specific about Augie, I'd spoil your appetite and it's time for dinner. So let's forget about Augie and order, shall we? <laughs> Taxi! Taxi! 
taxi. You don't want a taxi, Mr. Templer. I got a car right here. Well, speak of the devil. Were you speaking of the devil, Mr. Templer? Figuratively, Augie. Oh, Linda, this is Augie. I see. Likewise. I am charming to have met you. It is a pleasure. Now, scram. What? Scram. I'm afraid you'd better scram, Linda. But will you be all right? Yes, I'm sure Augie will take care of me, won't you, Augie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, look, sister, you don't scram so good. You want I should show you how? No, she don't want you should show her how. Go on, Linda. I'll call you later. I... All right, Simon. I'll be waiting. And you, Mr. Templer, get in the car. But, Augie... You the... heard me. Ah, uh, me a gun again. Augie, this is where I came in. You mean this is where you get in? Go ahead. Oh, all right, Augie. Only this time, I drive. Oh, I'm hurt. You didn't like my driving. So you're hurt. I let you drive, we'll both be hurt. <laughs> My left hand stays in my lap with the gun. So just sit quiet. Mm-hmm. I uh, see Stanton changed his mind. About what? Firing you. Why should he fire me? Uh, he was very upset by last night's fiasco. Well, Mr. Stanton is not a man to hold a grudge. Oh, I see. Besides which, I know too much. About what? Things. Well, I'm glad you've kept your job. I'd hate to be taken for a ride by a really efficient hoodlum. That's no way to talk, Mr. Templer. I'll have you know I ain't no hoodlum. I'm sorry, I stand corrected. You'll sit right where you are. Yes, Augie. And no tricks this time. No, Augie. We ain't going to have another Fabasco. No, Augie. I am a careful driver. So I see. But now let's see how you do with my foot on yours. Hey! Just watch where you're going, Augie. Get off my foot! All right, Augie. Hey! (laughs) Congratulations, Augie. You're really alert. The way you grabbed that wheel, of course, when you grabbed the wheel, I grabbed the gun. Oh, this is getting monotonous. Well, I'm willing to quit if you are. Believe me, Mr. Templer, I am giving it serious consideration. Mr. Templer, as you live and breathe. Quite. But where's Augie? He met with another Fabasco. I beg your pardon. <laughs> you ought to, Stanton. And you can cancel the flowers again. I'm still alive. Why, of course you are. Why shouldn't you? Oh, oh, dear me. Did you think that Augie was trying to kill you again? Wasn't he? Dear me, no. I simply asked him to bring you here. Uh, he doesn't extend a very cordial invitation. No, I'm afraid not. But here I am anyway, Stanton. So what do you want? It's rather difficult to ask without Augie. It shouldn't be hard to ask. It might be hard to get. Yes, but since Augie failed again, why did you come? To find out why you sicked him on me again. I understood that when you paid me off this morning, we were quits. Ah, but that was before the murder. That alters matters. How? You have $15,000 of mine. Yours? I don't wish to discuss ethics, Mr. Templer. Let's just view this pragmatically as simply a bit of tit-for-tat, as it were. Very well, pragmatic tit-for-tat. What does it mean? I paid you $15,000 for silence. I thought you might care to repay me the fifteen for same... What would I want you to be silent about? Your whereabouts. The police are looking for the man who was in Stanton's office this morning. I think. If you were here in Augie's custody, I could offer you the choice of freedom or arrest. But uh, since Augie once again failed me, the whole matter becomes an academic question. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can't blame me for trying. After all, you would have done the same. In fact, you did the same, eh? Every man for himself. And no hard feelings, right? Quite. Good night, Mr. Stanton. There's a bull fiddle. Linda, do you have a key to the office? Yes. Good. I'll meet you there in 20 minutes. Why? Because I don't have a key. I mean, why do you want to get into the office? To find something. What? A clue. What clue? How should I know? I haven't found it yet. But you expect to? Uh, with your help. All right, I'll be there. But look out for Stanton. Why? I have an idea he'll be coming, too. Oh, did you ask him? No, but I don't think he needs an invitation. And you don't want him to see me? Not until we're in the office. I don't want to scare him away. Oh, it begins to sound ominous. You afraid? Not as long as you're there. I wonder how I ought to take that. As a compliment. All right. I'll be waiting, Linda. Hurry. Am I late, Simon? Right on the nose. Oh, good. I hurried. Well, let's go in. All right. 
Now, don't turn on the light. I don't want Stanton to know we're here. Whatever you say. But what makes you so sure he's coming? I just paid him a visit. I could see he was packing. He's preparing to leave town, and he'll probably want to clean out the office first. He's running away? So it would seem. Well, now what do we do? I'm going in back to see what I can find. You stay here at your desk. If Stanton comes, buzz me. You mean I stay alone in the dark? Well, I'll only be a minute, then we'll stay together in the dark. All right. Can you find your way to the door? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I found it. I'll be right back. All right. Yes, Simon? You want something? Has Stanton showed up? Not yet. Well, I'll be right out. Did you find what you were looking for? Yes. Already? Already. Amazing. <laughs> you don't know the saint. I'll be right out and give you a chance to learn. Yes, Linda. What did you find? Shh, shh. Do you see what I see? I don't see anything. It's so dark. At the door. Silhouette. Oh. Hello, Stanton. What? Oh. Here, let me turn the light on for you. Oh. Oh, Templar and Linda. Yes, we've been waiting for you, Stanton. How did you know? Elementary, my dear Stanton. Hmm. Seems you've beaten me, Templar, to everything except the draw. Put up your hands. I thought gunplay was out of your line, Mr. Stanton. Sometimes one is forced to take matters into one's own hands. But I assure you, I don't relish it. So please do as I say, both of you. Because if I'm forced to shoot you, I know I shall be quite ill. What are you going to do? If you two will just stand quietly with your hands raised. I have a better idea. He's between us, Linda. He can't watch us both at the same time. Get over next to her, Templar. Ordinarily, there's nothing I'd rather do. But under the circumstances... If you don't obey me, much as I hate the sight of blood, I shall be forced to shoot you. In other words, Stanton, there comes a time when even you are willing to commit murder. Only when absolutely necessary. It's a nice distinction. I don't care to discuss it. Now, will you get over next to Linda? On the contrary. Linda, while he's watching me, now is your chance. Clout him with that standing ash. No, no. No, you don't. All right, Stanton, now that you've turned to her, I've got you covered. Drop your gun. All right, all right. Don't shoot. As I've told you, I can't stand the sight of blood, especially my own. Pick up his gun, Linda. Oh, I've got it. Uh, dear me. Perhaps Augie isn't so incompetent after all. Gunplay can be quite complicated. Well, we'll send you where you can learn the art from experts. Let me have his gun, Linda. And then you can call the police. All right. The police? But but you can't. Can't we? You you promised if I paid you... The... I didn't promise a thing, Stan. That was Briggs. What? Besides, there's more than just a swindle to settle. Let's not overlook the murder. Quite right, sir. You put the police on to me, you'll have to face them for the murder charge. I wouldn't try to pin the murder on me, Stanton. You see, I could point out that Briggs was blackmailing you in my name. You found out about it and... Are you trying to say that I killed Briggs? It's as good a story as that I did. Why, you you have no proof, Templar. We'll see. I came here this morning at your invitation. Briggs was terrified. He didn't know you and I had met before. He thought if I talked to you, you'd find out I wasn't the one who was blackmailing you. That it might give Briggs' his game away, so he knocked me out to keep me from meeting you. That still doesn't prove anything. Ah, uh, yes, proof. The proof of the pudding is in the eating, and you can't eat your proof and have it, too. What on earth does that mean? <laughs> Nothing at all. Go on, Linda, call the police. Yes, sir. Templar! Shh, please, the lady is phoning. Hello, operator? I want the police, please. Hello, police? Can you send a car to the Stanton Real Estate Company? Eights and Hudson Street. We have a swindler and a murderer, that's right. Yes, that's right, Ace and Hudson. Goodbye. Templar, you're making a big mistake. I know, but I wanted to give Linda a chance to complete the call, Stanton. Naturally, she wouldn't have if I'd said she is the one who killed Briggs. Simon. What? Ah, uh, Linda, it looks like we never will get that chance to sit in the dark together. This is absurd. Why would I want to kill Briggs? Because you were in on his scheme with him, and you were afraid if he were caught at it and talked, he'd implicate you. So you killed him while I was unconscious. Why, you... You're... You're crazy is the usual line at this point. Well, you are. I had nothing to do with Briggs. Yet when I came here and asked to see Stanton, you left your desk and went in to get Briggs instead of talking to him on the intercom. Well, I... You wanted to talk to him behind my back in case he wanted to cook up a story. No. Then why didn't you use the intercom? It's connected with his office and it works. I checked. So that's what you were looking for. You think you're so clever. Well, you can just... Uh, uh, Linda, Linda, careful. Remember, I'm a saint. Taxi! Taxi! 
You don't want a taxi, Mr. Templer. I got a car oh, here. Oh, no, Augie. Not again. What's the matter, Mr. Templer? Don't you like my company? It's not that, Augie, but I'm warning you, if you keep driving a hot car around town, some nice policeman is going to speak harshly to you and pull you in. Uh, Mr. Templer? Yes, Augie? To tell you the truth, it ain't a hot car. Not even slightly warm? Nope. I bought it. Paid cash. But... Yeah, I wouldn't like it to go no further. Oh, I understand, Augie. Don't worry. I won't say a word. I realize what it would do to your reputation. You have been listening to another adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. And now, here is our star, Vincent Price. This year, the Forest Service of the United States Department of Agriculture prevails on the vacationing and motoring public to exercise extreme care with fire while living, working, or visiting in or near forest and woodland areas. Remember, friends, it only takes a moment's carelessness or thoughtlessness to set fire loose in the forest. So let's all be careful. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of the saint. Good night. Tonight's script of The Saint was written by Jerome Epstein. Our cast tonight included Francis Robinson, Arthur Q. Bryan, Ted Von Elts, and Donald Woods. The music was composed and conducted by Vaughn Dexter. The Saint, transcribed based on characters created by Leslie Charters, is a James L. Sapier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price can now be seen in the Universal International Picture Curtain Call at Cactus Creek. And all you Saint fans will be glad to know that The Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Your announcer is Don Sandler. Night Beat and Top Secret, two suspense-filled, action-packed shows come to you tomorrow night on NBC. Make a date, hear Top Secret with Lona Massey as a counter-espionage agent, and Night Beat, the story of Chicago after dark. Both top shows tomorrow night on NBC. Next, it's Sam Spade, then Summer Symphony with Benny Goodman on NBC. NBC.